why you need to own gold coins in your portfolio not the gold etfs but the actual coins that's what we're going to talk about here today at the heritage wealth planning youtube channel and my argument is going to be different than i think what you hear all these other guys out there um who talk about gold i i just uh, we're going to talk about we'll, we'll tell you why you need to and i'll show you how to do it all right so welcome aboard if you like what you see subscribe comments questions thoughts the whole thing thumbs up always help me of course the blog at heritagewealthplanning.com uh, don't forget to go there as well. So let's dive right into this. I came across an article in the New York Times. Look, I don't read the New York Times very often. Uh, I follow instapundit.com, instapundit.com. And uh, Glenn Reynolds, who's a law professor there from the University of Tennessee, a lot of ways, uh, very similar thoughts I have to him in terms of more libertarian uh, kind of philosophy of uh, live free and die, or live free or die, or live and let live. How about that? That's probably better terminology. Uh, and he's got a group of very uh, libertarian-minded uh, folks on there. Uh, the lady who linked to this is a uh, law professor over at uh, San Diego, something like that, University of San Diego. Again, another very libertarian-minded person, which, uh, which I'm fond of. Anyway, so here's Venezuela. Venezuela's economy contracted 29.8% in the third quarter, all right? That's 30% in one quarter to the Venezuelan economy contract. Uh, let's just read this a little bit, then I'll share my comments with you and go back to why this means something. Caracas, Venezuela economy shrank by 30% in the third quarter compared with a year ago, Yeah, said the opposition controlled Congress. So again, it's the opposition controlled Congress. They could <laughs> be lying, certainly, but we don't know uh, as a five-year-long recession deepened. Uh, this was a sharper deceleration than what OPEC than the OPEC nation's 16.6 contraction in 2017, according to the preliminary data compiled by the country's uh, central bank. So we got the central bank, which is controlled by Maduro. Uh, they're saying 16.6, and then the opposition Congress is still saying 30 percent. Either way, these are vast, mass contractions. These aren't recessions, my friends. These are deep depressions. Uh, the economy has been a free fall since oil prices collapsed in 2014, quickening the unraveling of an already faltering socialist system. Hyperinflation, the fall in oil production, and the lack of confidence in the economic model are the reasons for the country's disastrous behavior, says opposition lawmaker Angel, uh, Angel Alvarado. The National Assembly has become a sole source of reliable gross domestic product inflation data since the central bank stopped publishing economic indicators in 2015. Hmm, wonder why. The IMF has been pressuring Venezuela to provide economic data for weeks in line with the membership requirements. The central bank's board of directors is interested in providing data, but one member of the board is seeking to sweeten them, said a source told Reuters. More than 3 million people have left the country since 2015 as it faces shortages of basic goods like food and medicine and hyperinflation that the IMF expects to reach a 1 million percent this year. Uh, President Maduro blames economic woes on U.S., of course, uh, and, uh, and economic war being sanctioned or waged by the South American country's business elite who are basically all in jail. All right. So what's the point of this? So. When uh, I'll never forget when uh, Chavez, uh, Hugo Chavez took over, I think it was 99, and Jimmy Carter, uh, I mean, the whole thing was a fraud. We knew it. Jimmy Carter sent was sent, I think, by the UN, maybe it was by Clinton to go down there and monitor, and he gave his blessing. And that was, uh, of, of all the things that Jimmy Carter did right and wrong, that was will ever be a stain on his legacy. Uh, the fact that he knew that Venezuela and Chavez was stealing the election and he still sponsored because he actually agreed a lot of ways with what Chavez was saying uh, in terms of socialistic uh, tendencies that he had. Now, back in 1999, he wasn't explicitly socialistic like he became, but uh, Jimmy Carter, bless it. So 2004, 2003, one of those years, uh, Chavez did what uh, all wannabe tyrants do is that they stage a coup uh, where they are pretending to have been taken over by a military opposition. And that way uh, gives them sympathy. So when they can come back two days later uh, and say, hey, we're taken back over, but we got to eliminate the opposition from ever doing this again. And I'll never forget 2003. I think it's three or four. I can't remember. It's October, one of those years. And I was stoked because I can't stand Chavez. Didn't like him back then. 
And I certainly, he's dead now. Don't like him. Uh, his successor is even worse. But anyway, in 2003 or four, I'll never forget that. I was, I was very excited to see the Venezuelan uh, opposition take over. But in hindsight, that was certainly a fake uh, because two days later, Chavez was back uh, and stronger than ever. And uh, Erdogan, uh, where have we seen a, a similar example of this? Oh, in Turkey. Was it last year or this year? I think it was last year. Uh, where Erdogan t was uh, deposed by opposition. And, of course, he was able to come back and uh, basically eliminate all opposition and jail uh, anyone who opposed him. And that's the same thing Chavez did. I mean, it's just it's all fake. It's all fake. It's banana Republican. I mean, it's just it's all fake. But it works, man, because the media, New York Times, I mean, my goodness, look at the New York Times history going back to Walter Durante and uh, or Durante and uh, the, the Soviet Union. Uh, but uh, potent. Pot Potemkin, I can never say that word, villages all around. Uh, Durante was a, a stooge for the Soviet propaganda, which he reported back to us uh, back in the early, late 20s, early 30s, which led a lot of American citizens to actually relocate to what they thought was the milk and honey of the Soviet Union and ultimately got executed there uh, a, by Stalin and his henchmen. It's, it's just sad. And all these guys should be shamed and they, they should literally have a, a stain on their legacy. So we fast forward now to now and you know Chavez dies. He uh, corrupted the whole oil thing. The whole they took over the oil. They got rid of the private sector. The whole thing is just it's just part and parcel Atlas Shrugged is all there is to it. Uh, the incompetent boobs took over. They don't know what the heck they're doing. So at the end of the day, they don't know what they're doing. They're blaming the spike of oil, uh, the, the drop in oil prices because of hydraulic fracking, it, it, they're opening up the U.S., opening up to more production. Uh, you can even say OPEC not uh, limiting supply. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter what the price of oil is. Venezuela is a basket case. But the crazy thing was, in 1999, you know what was this basket case? Was his neighbor in Colombia. Colombia was a basket case because of the cartels, uh, F-L-A-N, F-A-L-N, I think, F-A-L-N, uh, essentially was taking over the country of Colombia. Uh, Colombia elected, was it Uribe back then? I can't remember, but they, I don't think it was Uribe. I see the guy, in, I can't remember. But Colombia elected, elected a guy to come and stop it, and he did. And he did. He stopped it, kind of like what happened in Peru with Fujimori in the Shining Path. And so uh, now Peru, Fujimori... Uh, he, he, I was same thing happened in the 80s in Peru. Same thing happened with Colombia with Uribe. And I, I forgot Alvarez, I forgot his predecessor or successor. Either way, these guys took over, they got rid of the communists, they got rid of the cartels, and now Colombia is thriving. My brother is down there today as we speak, he's down there today, and he says it's the best place he's ever been. And he's a world traveler, he's the best place. He said he loves it, it, it just is fantastic. And yet in 99, Venezuela was the most wealthiest country in South America by far, by far. And now it's a flipping basket case. Colombia was a basket case, and now it is just booming. My brother says it's like Spain. It's like a, like a Bogota. It's like a European country. It's like you're in Spain. And it's just it's freaking awesome. It's wonderful. Peru in the 80s was a basket case. Fujimori takes over and he gets rid of the shining path. And now it opens up to prosperity like we have. Now, obviously, what happens, the leftists take over the Chavezes of the world. Uh, what's the lady's name from Brazil? I uh, forgot her name. Dima, Dilma something. Now she got a, I think she might be in jail. Uh, I forgot the guy in Peru, uh, Argentina. Ah! I'm drawing a blank these names. But anyway. And then become basket cases. So what does this have to do with why I need gold? Do I think the U.S. will be like this? No, not necessarily. Could it be? Sure. Why could it not? Absolutely. So what happens to Venezuelan currency? Well, it's not worth anything. Literally, it's not. And I even have a, a trillion dollar Robert Mugabe Zimbabwe dollar bill. I have it. I bought it on Amazon for like a buck. It's around here someplace. Uh, it doesn't matter what the, the zeros are on the currency. No one cares. No one cares about the Bolivar, Bol Bolivia, Bolivar, whatever it's called in Venezuela, because it doesn't buy crap. What buys stuff is a U.S. dollar for sure. But then... You got things like gold. Now, this is silver. This is a silver, uh, an ounce of silver. Not anything. This isn't trade. We'll see what it trades. I, I remember. That's an ounce of silver. This is an ounce of gold. And this is my Indian head gold. And, I'll sh and that right there is trading at about 1300 And I don't care. I think an ounce of silver might be 1500 All right. So you got an ounce of gold and you got an ounce of silver. And I got a bunch of ounces of silver simply because uh, they're cheap. Then I got a tenth of an ounce of gold. 
And these tiny little things, and I tell you, be careful when you buy it. I actually lost one of these guys. That's a tenth of an ounce of gold right there. Um, and you should buy these. And the reason you should buy them is because gold is historic. It's biblical. Even pre-Jesus times, uh, gold, it goes back as a value of some sort. All right. So, I, I mean, what are the three kings? Uh, Jesus. Gold is one of them. Uh, uh, gold, frankincense, and uh, mirth were the three things. That, so we have going back to biblical times, gold has a value of some sort. But gold ETFs I don't have any value. What's the point about this? Is gold is not a hedge against inflation. I, I'd stop with this silliness that gold is a hedge against inflation. No, gold is a hedge against chaos. I'll share a story with you I had. And I'll never forget this. This is a, a black guy from Africa. I'll never forget this. A wonderful human being. Uh, he had taken over his father's business. His father died, and uh, and he had his business in New York City, some kind of uh, ah, some kind of some kind of manufacturing business. No, New York City, New York State. I forgot. But anyway, he was getting ready to move his business to Georgia uh, because it was New York was killing him tax wise, killing him. So I, I, you know, I was wondering about this guy's story. Just a wonderful human being, capitalist as we all want. Just a, the epitome of a wonderful immigrant su success story. Love this guy. I can't remember what country he comes from, Ghana, Senegal, I just don't remember. But anyway, he's telling me about what his background. I said, well, how'd your dad start the business? Well, they had a business in whatever the sub-Saharan African country was. And back in the 70s, it got, uh, it got rep repatriated. Uh, repatriate, rep, I don't know, it got taken over by the communists. So the communist insurgency were all happening all over the place, led by the Cubans, led by the Soviets. And if you ever watched the movie, uh, <laughs> the what movie about the bottle from Coke, uh, uh, The Gods Must Be Crazy. Oh my, you got the best movie ever, The Gods Must Be Crazy. It is the funniest movie ever seen. I love it. Anyway, watch The Gods Must Be Crazy. And the whole point was they had this Cuban revolutionaries in there. It's just, it's funny. But anyway, so the communists took over this guy's country and they're running the business owners out of literally executing them. That's what they were doing. They're taking over the countries, taking over the business, executing the business owners, the bourgeois. So this guy had a, with this family. I think this guy had a wife, husband, wife and five kids or six kids. You know, there's a big family and they had to flee because they had everything taken from them. And they knew the commies were at their door. And the only way they could take a get out of the country was with gold bullion. Gold bullion wasn't the dollars, wasn't the U.S. dollar. Probably U.S. dollars would have worked back then, but it's gold. They had to use gold to bribe people to get out of the country. And they came to the border. And I, this is on the, uh, the Atlantic coast, some, some country, African country on the Atlantic coast. And they had to bribe people to get on their boat to take them across uh, the U.S. I think they ended up in Miami. I forgot. The whole story escapes me. But the, the, the story was this guy. He and his wife and five kids or whatever, they were under assault. They were going to get executed by the communist insurgents. And the only way they could escape was with gold. That was it. It wasn't anything else, nothing else but gold. They could escape and they did. They were able to get to the U.S. shore as a beacon of freedom and liberty with not anything on their, literally just a clothes on their back. That was literally, and you've heard the story a million times of Vietnamese boat people. You've heard it a million times. What makes America so great? So they get to the United States without anything, my friends, without anything. Somehow they end up in New York State at New York. I don't remember exactly, but somehow they end up there. And the guy just starts a business. I mean, it, again, it just, oh, such a wonderful story. He starts a business uh, and he becomes successful. And then he dies and he leaves it to his kids. His oldest was a son. His oldest says, look, this, you know, what's going on in New York is not worth. It. I'm going to relocate my business to, I think it might be South Carolina, actually. But anyway, the whole point was the basic of that is that he did not have this gold. His whole family would have been executed without question. They would have been executed, put up against the wall like Che Guevara used to do in Bolivia and uh, Cuba until he got finally murdered in Bolivia for his crimes against humanity, put him up against the wall, execute him. And then this man would never have been lived to tell me the story. This right here saved him. This right here is not a hedge against inflation. Gold was trading at what? 781 an ounce in 1981. If it's truly a hedge against inflation, it'd be trading at like 5,000 an ounce now. It's not trading at 5,000 an ounce now. It's trading at well, about 1,200. We'll see. Gold protects you from chaos. That's what it does. Now, the problem here, this right here is an ounce, all right? 
well, you don't want to just give this to somebody um, if you're if chaos, you need to get on a boat. You'd like to be able to keep some if you could. And this is why I do recommend you get these, you know, tenth of an ounces too, or quarter ounce, however you want to do it. Get some where you can use it as a barter if it if things go south. Get some silver because silver is cheap, man. I mean, at the end of the day, this, I mean, again, it's not valuable today, but it certainly could in the future. And this isn't because I'm fearful of zombies. It's because I look at history and I said, my goodness, things happen all the time to countries that weren't expecting it. Venezuela is just a perfect example of that. Colombia, you, na you name it. Look at Europe and the end of World War II. Beautiful, beautiful women had to sell their bodies in France in order to get food on the table. Don't believe me? Just read the books on this stuff because there's no other mechanism for them to put food on the table to feed their family. They had to sell themselves to soldiers of the, U, uh, the USSR, the commies, or the U.S. It, literally in front of their husbands in order to raise money. Gold will protect against that. I, and this is not to say the apocalypse is coming because of Trump or a I, I don't care about that. I don't care if it's a rate, if it's a hedge against inflation. Gold is not a hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against chaos. All right. So what this is where I use and one of these days, maybe I'll get an affiliate link to these guys where I can get a commission by referring people to the, to you, to them. But I, I don't have that here. Um, I use Jam Bullion. I'm a big fan of Jam. I've used these guys. Every time I buy gold or silver, currency or a coin i use jam bullion it's great i look can you get it cheaper i have no idea but i i like it because it's safe uh, that's all they they provide a good value uh let's see so the spot let's see the spot price right now on gold uh announces 12, 12 uh, 1228 i think i bought this at 1301 when i bought it that's when net of commission silver is 1441 i think i bought mine at 15 so it's gone down I frankly don't care i literally don't care um but anyway so here's their Gold, uh, was that gold? I forgot what it's called. Gold Eagles. I forgot. But anyway, here's the silver. Is that what I have right there? Um, I forgot. Gold Liberty coins. Is that what it is? I can't remember. Um, I just, I don't recall. I just like the buffalo head or the Indian head. I, I just, I think that's just beautiful. I love it. I, I just, if you're a fan of like uh, memorabilia, you know, like old baseball cards and stuff, which, oh, that's the, yeah, it is a buffalo. I love that. I just think it's a beautiful piece of Americana. I, I love it. But you can go through the stock here and just just all kinds of stuff you can look at. And 225,000 reviews. And I mean, I, I got nothing, but these guys have served me right. Actually, it's funny. One time, don't tell my wife, but I lost one of these uh, ounce or a tenth of an ounce because it's so small. I gave it to my son, put it in his Easter basket, and we couldn't find it. <laughs> Is this still running around here someplace? It's worth 100, well, I guess 120 bucks. I don't know where it is. Anyway, so I emailed GM Bullion. I said, man, I don't think you all shipped it to me because I, to me, I could have sworn that. I mean, I, I don't know. And they, But they had a video they showed me, and they said, no, we did. And I said, I guess I did lose it. So it's my fault, but I thought maybe they didn't. And I thought they might have a video that showed you that they didn't, but they, they did, and they were right. I was wrong. I just lost it. It's, it's in the house someplace. I just don't know where. Uh, but anyway, that's the one drawback for these small ones is that they're, they're real small, my friends. They're, they're, I mean, they're lighter than a dime uh, for sure, and yet they're worth <laughs> 10000 more than a dime. Anyway, so here's Jan Bullion. I'm a huge fan. I love it. This stuff is fun. Uh, you know, I don't know what the cost is in terms of how they get paid. I just don't care. If it costs 100 bucks to ship, uh, or it's free if you buy uh, a deal over more than something. I, I don't know. You have to look into it, but I'm a fan of it. I think you should buy some gold for your portfolio. It is not ETFs. We're not buying stocks. We're buying gold to protect against chaos. That's what you want. How much did you have? I don't know. Maybe every year buy $1,000 worth, every year buy 10000 whatever your portfolio is. I think having, say, I don't know, 3 to 5% of your total liquid net worth in some kind of precious metal makes sense. Should you do that specifically? No, I don't know. It's up to you. But you should buy some gold and some precious metal of some sort that you own, the actual where you can hold it in your hand. Absolutely. And uh, that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. It's sad to see what's going on in the state of Venezuela. It's nothing to do with the U.S. It has nothing to do with the, the economic titans that they have there. It's simply to do with socialism. It doesn't work. It will never work. It doesn't work, my friends. Uh, nationalization of product of the productivity will never work. It'll never work because it's always doomed to take away the incentive for the people who have the know-how to do it. It will forever be doomed. So when you see a guy like Chavez or you see a guy like Erdogan, you see a guy, 
I mean, who else is coming up? I, I don't know who anyone running out there. Um, I, off the top of my head, I don't know. But if you see these guys running rampant in their economies, you just got to be careful because it's 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 just not good. All right. Hope this helps. As always, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, any questions, thoughts, concerns, put them on there, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.